I am sat in the home of one of the greatest Indian actresses of all time, Karina Kapoor Khan. Hi, Karina. Hi, hi. How are you? Well, I mean, always a pleasure talking to, you know, my friends from London. And I'm so happy because you've opened your doors to us and you've let us here yeah. into your home. So thank you for having us here. Always. You know, when we were planning this series, right. I was thinking, who's that one celebrity who epitomizes what stardom means in Bollywood? Yeah. Who's had a career that spanned so long that they've seen the movie industry change and evolve and has managed to move with the times and it is only you Karina 20 years this year yes 20 years and counting hopefully we'll be here when we're also you know another 20 uh, yeah, another, another 40 yeah 50 years <laughs> 50 years how would you summarize the last 20 years in movies i think that it's been uh, exhilarating it's been i think an overwhelming journey also because there's been so many highs and as many lows but two decades are also not enough to kind of experience you know the kind of um, passion i have for this uh, f- for my craft i think over time i think it's only grown you know the idea of wanting to do roles that i love and now of course i think after marriage of course it's uh, fewer films but it's also films that i want to be a part of when i was sitting in the car and i was coming here i said wow garina kapoor khan what a woman because when i was looking at your legacy and your filmography man you've done it all yeah. you've done it all <laughs> all kinds of roles i am a die hard k3g fan yeah, right yeah of course the entire united kingdom is i think they still love it so much <laughs> Why do you think K3G connects with that UK audience so much? It's a typical kind of Hindi film drama. There's family, there's songs, shaadi ka gana, karwa chauth ka gana, family bhi hai, Indian khana bhi hai. I'm going to take my chance here, but will you do this with me? Of course. Hey Poo, movie tonight? Tell me how it was. Oh. Hey Poo. Whatever. Movie tonight? Tell me how it was. <laughs> I feel so happy. Uh, am I looking fat in this? Well, um well, I know what I'm looking pretty hard and tempting. <laughs> am I looking fat? Fat? PJT. Pretty hard and tempting. A year into your career, you had a role that actually you couldn't shrug off for many years to come. And no, and it's so strange that after 20 years, it's actually still coming back in a way in 2020 because i like you said it's pop culture it's a character that somehow i don't know how it just connected with the youth then and it connects with the youth now probably i would if i can really actually say you know you actresses will always do different kind of parts but you've never seen a character like po you've never seen somebody who's so blase and who just speaks her mind you know it just connects instantly with you know the youth of every generation did you feel stupid when you were acting out those scenes yeah, really it was like you know i was like karan what are you making me do i don't know what you know and to give it to karan actually he was like listen i'm telling you you have the smallest role in this film you're going to walk away with this film and i was like i'm what are you saying you know like because sharuk and amit ji and kajol had tailor made roles they were in every scene because they all they were doing was crying and i was like the typical syndrome is that you're a great actor when you're crying on screen yeah. everyone's like wow what a shot or wow what a performance you do get to cry at the end though yeah i do like but you've just met amit ji's character for the first time and you're already crying yeah i'm time. already <laughs> crying but the whole idea is that a character that was actually making you laugh became yeah. the iconic character in the film. And was it as much of a burden as it was a blessing because after K3G everybody tried to write a character like Poo whether that was Khushi whether that was Jeena Sirf Mere Liye yeah, they wanted they wanted Poo. Who, they just wanted Poo. Was that hard for you as an actor so new into the industry who wanted to do everything and here people were just giving you that for the Absolutely. start? Absolutely. I think that was the case until you know I decided to like be like listen I don't want to do this and I was like I started changing gear a little bit whether it was Chameli or Dev or Omkara and then Jabbi met so I had to consciously kind of you know take that decision that you know I don't want to sign any movies for a year Oh you uh, didn't sign any movies for a year No I didn't yet. before Jabbi met I was wow. like I don't want to do it I did Omkara and that was it Because I wanted to obviously um 
make that effort that I want to do different kind of work and I want people to know that I can do different kind of work. You were never scared of being part of ensemble movies and you were never scared of being part of even two heroine films, whether that's Etras or Yuva, which had a, an ensemble yeah, cast course. as well. What was it at such a young age that made you so confident in your own skill set that it didn't matter who else was in the frame? The thing is that, you know, I've never looked at a film that, you know, I need to have the central part. I've always looked at a film in totality that, you know, it's the entire cast and crew and 250 people standing on this set that make the film. Yeah. I'm not the only one that makes this film. Yes, I'm going to do my bit. And, you know, actors actually should have the right to choose a part that they love and they enjoy. Like, of course, I did a Chameli, which was a title role. <laughs> But I've always enjoyed also doing films which spoke about the film or whether, you know, you had an ensemble cast where you could share your chemistry. It was always about, it's it's always been about the project and the film, you know, rather than, you know, just that, oh, this should be about me. You've said this yourself, you've matured so much over those years as well. I remember uh, watching an interview you'd done with Simi Garival at the time, yeah. 2002. And the Karina I saw then and the Karina I see today are two completely different people. I was 17. <laughs> and now I'm closer to 40, which actually not many actresses would want to say, but I'm very proud that I'm very excited that in, on the 21st of September will be my 40th birthday. Oh, wow. And I'm happy that even at this age, I've been uh, so uh, grateful that the audiences have just lapped up my film and it's, you know, almost we're touching 250 crores. Yeah. So that's practically unheard of in an industry when a film like Good News with Akshay Kumar, where actually the woman had quite the modern independent part you know in the film that says a lot for the choices that I've made and also that the fact that I think the audiences are changing today it's not just about you know being 20 something and you know being able to romance the younger lot so how I watched your interview with Simi Garival from all those years ago well, I think there's a video on you of you on the sets of Mehr Prem Ki Diwani Hu are you ever forced to watch back those early snippets and those early interviews and how does that make you feel it makes me feel like I god like what was I thinking that's really? basically like what I think all the time because you know I think so much has changed in the last uh, two decades and of course I've changed as a person also you know everything has my whole my entire approach to life my thinking everything has changed I think when I was 17 one is very immature and brash you kind of think that you know you own the world of course I think a 17 year old should probably think that that is the age to think that and you know uh, learn from mistakes so I think I'm very uh, happy to know that I have nothing to regret but I've learned I've learned from my mistakes. You know, the media created the image of Garina Kapoor, yeah, the diva. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. You were the ultimate diva. You know, nobody wanted to argue with you. Nobody wanted... I mean, yeah. I think the perception of Garina Kapoor was far scarier than who Karina Kapoor actually is. And the truth is that that's why I till today don't even bother clarifying who I am. I think people still, you know, just imagine and they've just kept me like, okay, this is what she is. And I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, it's okay. That's what they want me. Some people want me to be the diva, some people don't. But I think, um, I'm like, you know, I just want people to like my work. You know, it's not about like, you know, knowing me or my personal life and what goes on. What is synonymous with Karina Kapoor is the songs. You know, yeah. the songs, I won't go back to my favourites from Mutsu Dosti Kuroge. Oh God! I won't mention Oh I My Darling. I don't even darling. remember those songs. Oh, come on. Oh My Darling, I Love You. You remember that one? Yeah, with two pigtails. Early de early kya hai ye paheli? Oh you remember that? Oh my god, yeah. Which film is that from? Yeah, de. Yes. Okay, what about Tere Bina, Tere Bina, Tere Bina, Tere Bina? That was a great song. From Sabine, which film? With Khushi. What about Dupatta Mera? That was with Tushar. See, you know them all. Of course. <laughs> I can never forget. I remember the best and the worst. What about Anko hi Anko me bato hi bato me tune chiraya jia? Oh God, Ajnabi. No. No? Fida. Fida, oh God, yes. Anko hi Anko me bato hi bato me tune chiraya jia. With Shahid. I was wearing a be beige pant and the green top. Yeah, yeah. See, have you ever met anybody who knows your career as well as me? Uh, no, I I like I didn't even remember the song. So obviously, clearly you do. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what other film I love. 
This is a real oddball that I'm throwing in there. Dusty friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shocker. There's this great song which is called Ishkna Ish Kokisise, where you're getting married and oh, Akshay is watching you from nice the gates. Oh, but that's a very nice song. It is a very nice song. I agree. In that wedding outfit. Yeah. So I'm gonna now have to mention the J word. Are you ready for the J word? Yeah. What's the J word now? Job. We met. Oh God. Because yeah. you know, for me, there was. Yeah, that chapter has to be there. <laughs> Job we met in 2007 was a film that I actually think many people didn't have that many expectations from because Imtiaz Ali was only one film yeah. old. You'd done a few films with Shahid already, like Chup Chup Gear, 36 yeah. Chinatown, and which didn't really work. Exactly. So I feel like Job we met just. No, It was I, like an underdog. You tell me how it was from your perspective. What were people I expecting? I know because I treated it like an underdog. You did? I, yeah, I actually used to be like go on the shoot and be like, listen, I'm doing this Yashraj film. I used to tell him, Tashan. 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 But actually, you said recently that Geet was one of the hardest characters for you to get into the mind space of because you're nothing like Geet. Yeah, in the sense like this talking fast and everything, people just obviously believed that you know it was so believable that everyone actually thought that this is Geet. The whole like, ab to haat chhod do. Yeah. अंदर आ गई हूँ मैं. अब तो मेरा हाथ छोड़ दो. इतनी भी सुंदर नहीं हूँ मैं. But I am, in fact, I am very. I am not. I'm I am like that but I'm a very practical girl in my approach. Right. If you see Geet was not practical in her decision. <laughs> she was a bit stupid. <laughs> yeah. She actually did everything for love she you know kind of ran away didn't really know where that guy was where she was going. But I'm not anything like that. It's one of those films again that you could watch again and oh, again. Oh of course. Which of your films have you watched the most times? Actually none. Really? In the last decade I've stopped watching my movies for sure. Earlier like till I think till Jab Bhi Met I watched Most of my films and Golmal Three and stuff like that, but after that I haven't really watched myself on screen. I'm just like, I kind of cut off from that character the minute the film is over. You know when from such a young age you've wanted to be part yeah. of this world, and when you get that success, and I'm not talking here about fame, but when you get that taste of success that I did a good performance, does it ever start to wear off? Does the charm of being a successful actress ever start to wear off? Actually, not. In fact, it kind of gives you an added pressure, you know. That oh God, okay, fine. You know, the expectations are constantly building, and the expectations are that okay, I need to do this, so I need to do better. Acting and this industry is such one profession that you can't really take for granted. You know, you need to constantly be on the ball, visually, because it's a visual medium. Physically, mentally, you have to just be all there. You know, so it is. It's very taxing. and uh, yeah that's why i think i don't know how i've lasted two decades because it's it's a gutsy profession you need to have that kind of mental uh, balance also a lot of people can you know either go to the extreme ends of like you know take the success too seriously or your failure so i think the
constantly there. In fact, now I think the younger lot films have changed so much. Um, and with this Instagram and everything, I think everything's in fact a lot more easier than what it was. Oh, you think it's easier for of them? Of course, I think that it's easier. The kind of directors, the kind of films that are being made are totally different today. But isn't there more pressure today on how you look? Isn't there pressure to be on point all the time? Yeah, but I think that that's so passe. Because when you look at even like actresses, whether they're in Malibu or whether they're in LA, nobody's dressed in it's like true. hair and makeup and you go out for a meal or grab a coffee. Yeah. And I'm like, don't do that. We should just be in our sweats. It's fine. Because that's what our fans would also want to see. 2008 and Dushan was this massive moment where, as you've mentioned, the size zero fad came into Bollywood only because of you. I remember sitting in London and reading a tabloid newspaper and it was like Karina Kapoor faints on the sets of Dushan because she hasn't eaten, eaten in days. Eaten, oh God. Tell me about that period. I mean, what on earth made you want to do that? Firstly, I never fainted. Okay. I'm, I'm very healthy, thank you, because I've always been. In fact, I was on a diet where I was eating parathas and I was eating everything. Oh, wow. In fact, I would always tell my spot boy that you, you interview though or bolo that what all I've been eating every two hours. Because I never starved. But you were really, really, really slim. Yeah. I mean, because I'm a tall, big Punjabi girl, I was like almost 43 kgs. But it was done the right way. I worked out a lot. I followed a strict meal plan for a year and a half. But if you ask me that if I could go back there, I can't. <laughs> because now it's like, um, now I, I'm just happy with the way I am. You know, I'm happy that I'm fit and I'm healthy. And... Um, yeah, I can't, I can't be in that, you know, extra thin mode now. The year is 2010 and you are the most popular Bollywood actress in this industry. You were doing Ra One with Shah Rukh, Three Idiots with Amir, and Bodyguard with Salman. All around and the same I did time. Agent Vinod with Seth in the Oops. same year. How did that feel when really there was nobody even close to the level of popularity that you had at that time? I've never measured my success in that form, you know. Obviously wanting to work with all of them was always on, you know, every actress's wish list. And it just so happened, you know, that that particular year I was... Um, you know, I worked with Shah Rukh and Salman and Amir and all of them together, you know, it just, it, yeah, it just happened. I don't know how. In fact, Three Idiots, I think, was a, a role once again where it was obviously male-centric because it was about, you know, the three boys. Yeah. But I feel that Pia's character was like, I think, again, very iconic in its own way. You know, whether you talk about the Dhokla Fafara scene or whether you talk about the scene with Baman when she tells him that, you know, my... Uh, brother committed suicide. engineer I think those scenes have gone down in history. So I've never looked at a film that this film is called Three Idiots. So, you know, I should not be in it. Because a lot of people assess that. But I think I've been lucky that I've not looked at uh, my films like that. I've always looked at it from my perspective that what I can add to the film. All those films were real markers of success for any actor. Yeah. But how were you, who was this very talented actor, weighing up the decision between, I should do this film because it's a big commercial project, and I should do this film because there's a meaty character for me to play? Because, you know, at a very early age, I did a film like Chameli. I was always also sliding more towards whether it was Omkara, whether it was Dev, Dev whether it yeah. was Chameli, whether it was Yuva. Yeah. They were all films, Refugee, my first film. It was touted as a, a big film because we had Amitabh Bachchan's son with yeah. us in the film. Yeah. But uh, it was not the typical run-of-the-mill short skirt, leather skirt, dancing film. Otherwise, you would have done Kahona Pyar Hai. Exactly. Yeah. So it was, I've always started, in fact, with a slightly unconventional touch, but always wanting to go on to do the big commercial film. But it feels like people just don't want you to do those films. People want to see you do those masala of films. Of course, they want to... They want to see me do, I think, a mix of both, which I've really tried to balance, you know, and really tried to do it. Um, but of course, all the big commercial films came my way, whether it was then later the Golmal series or whether yeah. it was working in Singham with Rohit Shetty. So I've always tried to do as much as I could to balance it out. 
I feel like 2012 was such a great year for you as well. You had Heroin and you had The Lash in this yeah. year. And Heroin really was such an excellent performance from you. I know, of you. course it was. But it, it was just didn't get its due because probably, I don't know for what reasons. You know, I think it didn't get its due because it shatters the illusion of what a heroine yeah. should be like. They want to see you like you're on point all the time. Yeah. There's nothing pr- wrong in your life. Yeah. You're like the epitome of... This was too hard. Like I said, I gave my heart and soul into the film and I did it with utmost conviction. Uh, but yeah, so it'll always be one of my favourites. No two ways about that. You know that film deals with the insecurities that yeah. an actress has to go through. How much of your own raw emotion did you bring to that role? I think I'd, that is possibly a character that has like, you know, stayed with me and the fact that I gave it my all and I couldn't even like after the film released and uh, when it didn't get its kind of due, of course, it, I was very, very upset for quite quite a while that, you know, I'd given so much to it. The last just a yeah. couple of months later. The last was also, I loved it. <laughs> Can I say it now? I mean, it has been eight years since yeah. the film released, but so she's a ghost, right? She's yeah. not real. Yeah, what absolutely. was your reaction? No, you know, Saif was offered this film. Oh, And okay. for some reason, I don't know why, he said no to it. At that time, the two girls were different. Right. Excel recasted this film and went to Amir and he loved it and he picked it up and Amir called me. So Saif had already told me about this film and in fact, I told Saif, I said, I don't know why you didn't do it. At that time, I think he was looking at doing a more commercial kind of movie. But when I heard it, I was like, I think it'll just be fabulous. And according to me, I think it's also one of my finest works because it had to be slightly eerie as well as, you know, believable right till the end. So I really enjoyed doing it. You were managing to balance all these different titles of being a artistic actor, a commercial actress, a dancer, a star. Did any of those burden you at all? Did any of those titles burden you at that time? I was like, I don't know. I think people were like, yeah, you know, it's like when you're a star, you have to be open to everything, you know, and you have to be open to people, you know, calling you names, good, bad, ugly, amazing, whatever it is, you know. So you have to learn to be indifferent. And I think over time, I kind of have grown to be indifferent towards that. Earlier, I wasn't. I was very emotional about things. Not that I'm not now, but now I can say that I'm indifferent. And in this profession, I think this is the way to be and I think time has taught me that I feel like there was a clear change in you when you got married as well yeah and I think because we've all met Seth and I've interviewed Seth many times and he has a really calm energy about him yeah yeah what perspective did Seth bring into your life that was missing before that it's not like somebody can change you completely but I think somebody like you said can just add peace and calmness to your being, you know. And I think the best thing that I've learned from Seth is actually, I think, you know, being comfortable with myself and not kind of, you know, always running after money, success, fame. I think he's like taught me to love the greater things in life, which is there's something greater than money, fame and success, which I probably didn't know. And which I think is, you know, family and love and, you know, calmness and peace of mind or reading a book or just, you know, sitting and having a conversation um, not about, you know, work or competition. He's brought that work-life balance in a little bit, right? I think so. More family and more kind of... um, yeah, there's, there's contentment is the word rather than anything else. And the work that you have done since then, whether that's Ki and Ka or Urta Punjab, which I just think is such an excellent performance yeah. from you, have been really path-breaking movies. Even Veera the Wedding, nobody would kind of have made a film about four girls. Everyone was Dil Chata hai about male friends. No one really spoke about female divorce or female friendships or, you know, the way, you know, that's what our scene was. I don't think people were expecting that. Would you say that this is your most liberating phase of your career? Would you say that you're getting the most exciting roles at this phase in your career? I think that I'm making exciting choices because I'm also doing fewer films. And I think the idea is that I feel, you know, when you're not kind of running a race, you're not competing. I know to compete is a great drive. You know, it's a great high. But 
the idea is I think the greatest competition is when you're competing with yourself and when you're happy. I can tell you're not in the rat race anymore. Yeah. You're no, not interested. No, I don't want to. And the idea is that I left the rat race long time back, even before. Everyone was like, don't get married. You know, then, you know, your career's over. I was like, I don't want to be in this. I'm not running this competition. I'm I'm not I'm not a rat. I'm an actor and I will always be an actor. And if I don't do this now, a lot of women actually if i may say actually took inspiration from this so the idea was that a lot of people suddenly had faith that this can and then a lot of people followed after that from this generation you're also the first actress to have gone back to work so quickly after having had a baby yeah. and who worked throughout her pregnancy as well exactly i think that i don't know why everyone was like they actually a lot of people told me that we've never seen an indian actress pregnant <laughs> because every indian actress whenever they got pregnant they kind of went into hiding you yeah. never saw them they either went to london they went to america or they never left their house or they were kind of you know always like because you can't see her fat yeah. or you can't see her bloated and you know hands swell up fe- face swells up i mean you up. went and did coffee with karan while you were pregnant yeah <laughs> even though i was i was almost i we shot coffee with karan in november or first week december and i delivered them 20 days later wow so i was actually looking like my entire bloated best and i was like when i you looked, looked at the episode i looked fat no, and you didn't. not very beautiful <laughs> but i was like it's fine it's okay but you know what shall i tell you something nobody can own a red carpet like garina kapoor no. can own a red carpet we were in dubai with you uh, for toy fair awards in mm. 2016 and toy you fa. walked onto this red carpet and man a star had really arrived that's the only time probably i'll be like you know really well dressed and with my makeup and hair <laughs> even today like everybody my manager is like but will you put makeup because i think she doesn't trust me because she knows that if i had my way i'd be in my sweatpants with my hair tied talking to you you know and i'd be like yeah it's fine what's the big deal you know am i not allowed to be like that or do i like always have to be like a diva do you feel like there's a lot of pressure from other people for you to behave in a certain way i don't know i think there's this weird culture here right now where everyone if you go to see is like you know dressing up and preening for the paps but whereas if you see in hollywood they do red carpets but yeah. when you see them normally you never see them stop and pose for the paps it's no. not possible i think here there is a little excitement that we're all dressed up and we're going here and that so i honestly get quite annoyed when priyanka first went to the us and you were so complimentary towards her on uh, i think maybe coffee with karan it was yeah, a, yeah. a chat show and you said look i could i wouldn't be able to hack it i wouldn't yeah, be able to course, go out there and, you know i think you didn't do dil dhadakne do because you didn't want to do an outdoor for like 40 days or yeah, whatever it, it was and how hard is it to hold on to that kind of sense of contentment and fulfillment when you know there are opportunities that you're not taking at the same time This is the life I've chosen, you know. I've chosen that I want to be married. I've chosen I want to be a mother. I've chosen that this is what I want and I'm going to do it. And of course there will be certain sacrifices when you want this. You know, the problem is that when you want the cake, the bakery and you want to eat it too, there might be few sacrifices far and few in between and you have to be prepared for that. Everyone's like, "Oh, is Hollywood next?" and I'm like, LA is too far. Yeah. I can't leave my three-year-old and, you know, park myself in LA. I'd love to, you know, move there and, you know, have oh, a life. You'd be so good in a Hollywood film, though. You know that. I know, but <laughs> but why all the way there? I'll be good. I'll be good in a Hindi movie also, and I'll still be, you know, not be away from Tamur. So I don't have that regret. But I I applaud people who have that gumption and who have that courage to do it. I think that's just spectacular. Karina Kapoor Khan 2020 marks 20 years of Karina Kapoor in this film business. What would you like to achieve in the next 20? Oh god. I think what I'd like to achieve is hopefully this interview will be done in London yes. and not in Mumbai <laughs> because London's my favorite city in the world and all my greatest fans are in London. So starting from that, I don't know, maybe move to London and then continue working uh in India. That that's an option, that's a dream. Wow. Also. So you and Sonam are going to rule Notting Hill and Hyde Park I think. She's already moved there. She's already moved there. <laughs> But that's fine. Sonam will be at the stores, I'll be at the park. <laughs> so that's okay. We'll we'll find a mid path to meet somewhere. And uh, yeah, I think just, you know, being um just being happy and doing some good work and you know, like people like all of you guys who've already always supported me and loved me continue to say that, you know, She's 60 and she's still cool. She's still a star. Karina Kapoor, thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely chatting with you. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. For more great audio and video from the BBC, listen on Sounds, watch on iPlayer.